I'm Judge Catherine Lucero. I was able to obtain a grant through SAMHSA, which is the federal government's uh, Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services um, Agency. I was able to form a partnership with Connection to Community uh, here in San Jose, whereby we are um, doing a whole makeover to ensure that our kids who end up in our Path to Services Court um, are, are, are immediately um, told that we expect school success, we expect them to um, make a commitment to leading a life that is uh, free of substances. Yeah, yeah. So it depends on how you do. If you're sober and you're working through your, 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 your treatment goals, mm -hmm. then you, know, you can have another day for yourself for working and all that other stuff. So it's up to you to kind of yeah. you know, work towards your heart goals and also to uh, renewing and healing family relationships. One of the things that we've been able to develop with partnership for, uh, for Connection to Community is our Opportunity Court. And what I've asked our court to do was allow me to hold court in the community over on Story Road. Um, and, you know, I just have to tell you that that's, that's to me, that's been a resounding success. We have multiple service providers coming once a, a month to Connection to Community. Connection to Community has actually built a courtroom for me. So I actually sit, uh, I have a, a, a courtroom that, that on other days is a multi-purpose room, but I, they have, they've made a bench area for me. My clerk comes with me. We have court interpreters there. We have our deputies and our, and our bailiffs there to keep order. And we hold, we hold court. And the beauty of it is, is that not only am I holding court out in the community, closer to where our clients live, but right next door to that courthouse, which is all under one roof. So, you know, in the next room, we usually have a bustling array of service providers who are there to talk to our youth, connect with our youth. The best way to help protect the community, prevent future victims, is to make sure that the kids we work with get the services they need, um, that they're held accountable for the behavior that brought them here. Um, so I think that's, um, that's why I think it's a, a, a good kind of court to have and it's why I wanted to participate. There's a level of frustration because with rehabilitation and substance abuse, um, there comes relapse and the kids struggle and it's hard to see them struggle and see their families struggle. We're finding or I think uh, the data would suggest that um, there are things you can do that work better than other things. And I know when I was here originally 12 years ago, I think all the kids would come in, they would be given the same or similar services or sanctions or whatever, and you would likely get the same result. Um, and now, coming back after all that time, juvenile hall is half full. The ranch is half full. Uh, there's the numbers are way down as far as the kids who were in custody or whatever. And I think part of that is because the research shows that certain things produce better results, certain things don't. And I think this county has been committed to getting rid of the things that don't produce better results. Ultimately, what happens is if you don't invest in kids, that the kids are going to fall through the cracks in the system and wind up in adult court. And not only will there be more victims because the kids have continued to commit crimes, uh, there will be more victims, but the victims will suffer more losses. Um, the adult system will be, uh, have ever increasing numbers, which will lead to higher rates of incarceration. Um, and, you know, I think in, even inside the family, that cycle continues as a kid gets older, becomes a father, has kids of their own. Um, I think if you don't invest when the kids are young in education, rehabilitation, counseling services, et cetera, that you may be saving money now, but in the long run, it's going to cost. My name is Diana Urias. I came into the probation department January of 2014. I graduated from JTC February of 2015. I was involved in the Fly Mentor program, outside counseling, and other services that were provided to me by JTC. I started off rough always disregarding opinions. So I got involved in the JTC program because of ditching school, being defiant, not listening to authority figures, just like every other teenager that there was out there. 
But finally, my actions caught up to me, and I ended up on probation, locked up in and out of juvenile hall. But as time went on, you start to learn and mature about the decisions that you're making, and it just all clicks. I started being involved in my programs, using my mentor, utilizing all my support and my skills. And now I'm graduated from JCC probation after one year. And it was a long year, but it's possible for anybody to accomplish. I just think that this program would be better for people that need an extra push and more support around their environment. My name is Erica DeMassi. I'm a probation officer. I supervise minors that are involved in Opportunity Court. Uh, it's a dual diagnosis program. Um, so my kids have uh, drug, ad drug addiction and mental health problems. Opportunity Court provides oversight and collaboration in a way to minors that normal probation does not. It's very specialized in that we meet with our kids uh, every single week um, and we have a clinician on staff, we have a representative for the Legal Advocates of Youth on staff, we have a FLY mentor or a mentorship program on staff, we have uh, the Bay Area Legal Advocates on staff. So what happens, we all, the judge, the public defender, the district attorney's office, and all the people that I just mentioned meet in the same room. One of the things that I appreciate about our specialized program in the Opportunity Court is I think in general there's a negative connotation to probation uh, that it's punitive and what I really like about Opportunity Court is that uh, kids are rewarded and acknowledged um, for the progress that they've made and if they're struggling they're granted incentives um, there's a lot of people that want to be a part of our program. Uh, people who want to provide maybe clothing for the kids so that when they go to job interviews they're appropriately dressed. Um, we had a program that was involved that wanted to provide free shoes to our kids. We have um, just the providers that, that want to be a part of it and so they come into our kids lives and um, and that's wh what we can say to kids like okay you know we recognize that you have this need we have this thing that we can give you because this community-based organization over here has said what do you need for your kids how can we be a part of your program and so the, uh, so they're getting gift cards and clothing and food that it was amazing a few weeks ago we had opportunity court and there was bags of groceries just 20 25 bags of groceries out on the table I'm I'm drawing a blank on who provided it, but there was groceries out on the table, and each and every parent that came in went, got a bag of groceries, and took it out to their car. And she is, um, you know, we just have so much faith in the youth, and we know that they sometimes make um, mistakes, but really, um, you, you, we belong with one another. We're gonna, we're gonna kick off today's Opportunity Court with a graduation. Um, it, Sandra, is here and she is um, ready to graduate. When I start something, I could never finish it, and I like, I feel like I finished this program. I finished something, you know. So. That's why I'm here. If I can just have one successful, one person whose life you change, if that's what we all look for.